inside the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cave on the road on Belle Isle. The Chevrolet Detroit Belle Isle Grand Prix is here once again. This event, just so much fun. So much people come down, the racers, the drivers. It's a different sport that we're used to seeing. But Bud Denker, the chairman of this event, just told me recently that this event is here because it's the Motor City. It should be here. Racing was born here, and here we are. Speaking of something else that's been born here, the Detroit Red Wings. This is also hockey town. And so you have to have some of those guys come down and kind of merge the world. Dylan Larkin did just that, and he and Brad Galley had a little bit of fun doing some driving. You know fast on the ice. Do you know Elio Castroneves fast? No, uh, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to experience it though. All right, I'm hopping in the back seat. You got shotgun. Let's do it. All right, Dylan. Put your, put your belt, make sure we're safe first. Hi, Hi Elio. How you doing, bud? You guys ready? <laughs> Let's get out of here. I tell you, how old are you, 19? 19, yeah. Jeez, I don't think you're allowed to drive, you know, like, <laughs> like we drive. How does the speed out here compare to skating really fast on the ice? Ah, yeah. I, completely different. It's a little completely different. different. <laughs> it's completely control, different. I'm in control here. You got to ride in the two-seater. What do you think about riding with Elio? I was, you know, you can see it, air conditioning, and <laughs> yeah, but I got a lot of respect for what you do in that two-seater. It's uh, even one-seater when, when you're in the race, but, you know, it, you gotta be fit and you gotta be you gotta be on your toes at all times okay, around, around this tight corner. And, you know, it's pretty cool. Very nice, Dylan. Uh, appreciate it. That Hope was you enjoy, fun. brother. A couple other Red Wings also took part in the hot lap activity. Luke Glendenning and Riley Shahan as well. Here's a little video of Riley and I riding with Elio Castroneves, and well, he did admit a few times that he thought he might get a little bit. Sick. But there is a different experience during the hot laps if you are lucky enough to get that call on our very own Casey Hollins. Well, she went into that truck, put on the full suit, and got the fastest seat in sports experience in a two-seat. And I'm lucky enough, I get to get a real taste of the action. I'm about to hop in a two-seater IndyCar with Davey Hamilton and take a lap around the island. But first, I gotta go get suited up. Before my ride, I gotta get suited up. That means a fire suit, shoes, helmet, gloves, the whole deal, just like the drivers. Exactly. Oh, this is cute. You're probably small. Perfect. I don't know, I got a really big head. <laughs> a lot of responsibility with back there behind you. You ready? I like it. Oh, did they? Did they? Uh... <laughs> I wasn't the only one getting in on the action either. Red Wings forward Dylan Larkin got to take his own ride in a two-seater. Did you lose your breakfast? No, it was good. <laughs> that was it. It was good. I mean, crazy, a lot of respect for how fast he goes and in control. I mean, that was, that was unbelievable. I can take your head sock for you. And then we'll grab a photo of you right up by the front of the car. Okay. Since your hair is so good now, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't eat breakfast, by the way. I wasn't even going as fast as the guys are going to be going on Saturday and Sunday, and I barely survived. But I did, and I'm very grateful for the experience. Yeah, those two-seater cars certainly can move. It's the fastest ride in sports. Casey Hollins obviously looked like she had a whole lot of fun doing that. Bringing in Mike Brudenell, the Detroit Free Press auto racing expert. I'm going to call you an expert. Thank you very much, Justin. Do you deserve the expert qualities? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. of course. I wouldn't bring you on That's otherwise. What my, my wife calls me an expert, so there you go. There there you, you go. go. Hey, Mike, you know, this, this event every single year just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Why is this year, 2016, the biggest yet? Well, I think it's the IndyCar field. It's very deep um, and it's very strong. And I think there's a lot of new talent. And, of course, with uh, Alexander Rossi winning the 500, coming in uh, the next race, uh, he brings a lot of interest into it. And, and, of course, you know, Roger and Penske and the guys have really uh, tailored this uh, event. I think it's getting better every year because of just their commitment. 
The commitment to making the island look the way that it does is, has to be something that you think about, that you talk about as mm -hmm. well. What improvements have you noticed as someone who's been here for a long well, time? The infrastructure. I mean, um, the, the whole, uh, the place was a mess, honestly. And I know that that's going to upset a few people who don't like this race being here. But, you know, the, the infrastructure wasn't there, the drainage, uh, the, you know, the cleanliness. I think all those things have been improved and um, Roger's doing it because A, he loves the race and B, he loves the city. So for those folks who are, you know, upset about it, well, come on, get over it and, uh, you know, uh, your city gets a lot of attention and uh, people come, spend money, have a good time. I mean, that's worth it, isn't it? Absolutely. I'm thinking about some of the people that I've interacted with just walking around the island this weekend. What about some of the interactions you've had with maybe some non-racing uh, aficionados out there and their perception of this event? Well, um, I think they've felt that if it, the image of Detroit can be improved, race fans or not, let's get with it. You know, I mean, the downtown area is being uh, revitalized and younger people are coming back into the you know, city. Um, it's all good. It all sort of uh, connects. We're going to see a lot more fast racing today here. Duel number two, I think it's one of the most exciting things for drivers is they look at duel one, they prepare for it, they have the qualifier on Friday, then they go through it. Yeah. Now they got to do it all again this morning, mm. going into this afternoon. It's tough. I mean, it's uh, extremely tough to do one race a weekend. These guys are coming off Indy, month, well, two weeks at Indy, then they come up here, they've got the two races. Tomorrow, there's going to be a lot of tired guys uh, from the crew point of view. There's going to be some broken equipment, uh, and these drivers are going to have blisters on their hands and uh, sore feet. So, it's uh, and it's a humid day, uh, Justin. And uh, I think uh, uh, it takes a lot out of it, uh, out of one. But uh, these guys are athletes, so I think they can handle it. All right, give us the pitch. We have people sitting at home right now debating whether or not if they're going to come down oh. for duel number two. Yeah. Why should they come down today? Well, they're going to see some guys coming up from the back who really want to win this and get those uh, extra points, but. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, the Penske's got to be strong. Um, the, the Dixon and the Chip Ganassi group, extremely good. And uh, you never know, Andretti might surprise. You talk about some of those Frenchmen. Well, they're not only good on the track, they're also pretty good in the kitchen. Did you know that they can do a little cooking? No, I, um, I, I thought that they asked their uh, lady friends to uh, always cook for them, but no. Oh, no, no, no. Brad Galley has an interesting feature to explain this more. We get a dash of uh, Francais here in the sports cave. Yep. We're going to make some croissants, but apparently I got the wrong ones at the store. Yep. No, it's just, <laughs> I don't know if they knew the spelling of croissant for real. Croissant is not what we were looking for <laughs> this morning. Now those are nice hats. It's like my helmet. This is what they got me. Because <laughs> you're the chef. Okay, sure. No, you, you know, you know how chef you, right now. Yeah, <laughs> usually you do the Thank dishes. You. I think you got a my peel? Bam on the. Do we really? Yeah, I think yeah. so. No, I don't know. I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. What do you actually put on these when you make them at home? Nothing. Nothing. We could try with chocolate. Maybe we can do a pain au chocolat. We need two layers then, kind of. You eat it and it's good. Is that the checkered flag? Checkered flag. Oh, that's perfect. Put it on top like a burger. A burger. A burger. French croissant American burger. No. It's a beauty, just leave it like just that. Like and we're I... usually driving, not cooking, so... Yeah, we really absolutely don't know what we're actually doing right now. Here it is. Who's going to try it first? I, I just had a big breakfast, so... Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, ready? One, two, three? Yeah, one, two, three. Santé. That's really good. It is pretty good. Actually that. quite good. When you both win again, because there are two races, in the winner's circle, I'm going to bring you some croissants. As long as we're in victory circle, you can do whatever I you want. I can do whatever I want? Yes. There's still plenty more to come on the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cave on Belle Isle. You know, a lot of people think about racing, and they only think about the driver, but the teams that each driver has are huge, including the guy, Rick Mears, who used to race it. Now he's overseeing things for Team Penske. We'll meet him a little bit later on in the show. And Tony Kanan, this guy is one of the hottest names in racing. He's got a newborn child to go along with it with some fancy artwork that he's put on his body. We'll also be joined by his wife, Lauren Kanan, who will break things down as we head into day two of the Duel of the D. Stick with us here on the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Day. Welcome back to the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cave. On the road here at the Chevrolet Detroit Belle Isle Grand Prix. Day two of the duel coming up in just a couple of hours. 
Look, the drivers, they're a certain type of athlete that do their thing in the car. They have a great team of support though that we cannot forget about. All the guys that work on the cars themselves, fuelers, spotters. Rick Mears, he knows a little thing or two about driving these Indy cars. He was an Indy car driver and winner in the past. And here he is now on Team Penske helping out. I am joined right now by a pretty legendary guy in the oh. world <laughs> of IndyCar, a four-time Indianapolis 500 champion, Rick Mears. Uh, now, you're not driving anymore. You're a spotter for Team Penske. First question, I guess, is, you know, what do you like better, driving or spotting? Well, driving. Yeah. If I had been driving, I'd, I'd rather be driving. There's nothing, since I got out of the car, there, there, there will never be anything I could do to replace that. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the feelings you get from driving a car, you know, winning a race or whatever. You know, it's always gratifying helping the team to feel like you've got some input and try to help help build a better mousetrap or whatever, but, and it's very gratifying, but it's not the same. Mir says his role as a spotter changes depending on what's needed, but don't think the fact that his job is flexible makes it easy. It's, it's a lot of pressure, because you don't want to, you know, you don't want to make the wrong call and get them into trouble. My job is to try to help keep them out of trouble. Spotters have to be the eyes for the drivers. It does get difficult to see, you know, around you. You always, you know what your blind spot is in a car, you know, yeah. when somebody's in that, that one little spot. Well, the race cars have them too. And it's more vital in some parts of the race than others. It's good to be able to give the guy a heads up when somebody's coming out of the pit, you know, it's because they got a blend at the other end. And uh, so you can give him a heads up on that. Uh, at the start of the race, if, if, if he's back in the pack and something happens in turn one, you can give him a little warning, go high, go low to clear whatever might have happened. It may not be the Indy 500, but Mir says there's really nothing like race weekend in Detroit. I mean, it's the motor city capital of the world. You know, I mean, we, we need to be here. And, and, and plus it's, you know, it's Penske's backyard. We always look forward to coming here to try to get him a good result, yeah. you know. It's always, it's always good to keep the boss happy. Great to see Rick continue his legacy in racing. Speaking of legacies, though, sports producer Mike Foss legacy. down on, well, legacy. you know, it's high praise. It's high praise for a guy who does a lot for the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Game. Mike, Twitter is a little different this week. Usually we take your tweets out there, but the drivers talk a lot about coming to Detroit, especially to Belle Isle for this particular race, and they had some really interesting things to say this week, didn't they? Yeah, they really do. Of course, a lot of the IndyCar series, a lot of the other drivers who compete here on Belle Isle, very active on social media. We had a couple of them uh, join up at our WXYZ.com tweet up earlier this weekend. And uh, let's take a look at what some of the guys are saying about their time here in Detroit this week. We start with Carlos Munoz. He won the first race of the duel in Detroit last year and obviously looking to do it again. He posted, hello Detroit, let's do it again with a picture of his duel in Detroit trophy from last year. And then J.R. Hildebrand making a couple of observations about his time in Detroit, starting with, People dig their cars. It was like a modern day scene out of American Graffiti on Woodward last night. Following that up with people drive fast, which I got to say, I can seriously appreciate. Yeah, you would imagine so with an Indy car driver used to go in a couple hundred miles per hour. Not scared of the pedal on the right. And finally, Max Chilton traveling in style. Check this out. He said, feeling American, made it to Detroit via Chicago with my golf buggy on the back. Check that out. Survived the trip. So, of course, no shortage of Twitter uh, chatter whenever the drivers come to Belle Isle every year. And, you know, you, you were showing the hot laps earlier. I got a chance to take a hot lap the other day. Uh, Martin Plowman, one of the sports car drivers uh, on the, the circuit here at Belle Isle this weekend. A lot of fun there. Uh, good to get in on that for the first time this year. Too. Yeah, you got a little taste of what it's like to yeah. be out there. How, were you scared? Come on, no. Mike, be honest. No, no, that was fun. It was That's I want to do I want to do that two seater. The two seater. Next That's year. That's the next one. Next year. I'll do that. It's all about you in the two seater. <laughs> Speaking of those hot laps though, you know, leading up to the race weekend, they have some of the big wigs, some of the sponsors of this whole thing. Well, a pretty big one is the North American Vice President General Manager of General Motors, Mark Royce himself. He was down here taking a couple of hot laps. Roger Penske also in the mix, getting in and just letting it all go. You know, those guys are stuffed up in mm -hmm. offices all day. Finally, they get to let down, unbutton their top button, and let it rip. Well, the track is great for me, for my speed, but I'm not sure how it is when we get the big boys out there. But I told Jim, I said, it's smooth on the back straightaway when you're driving at 150 miles an hour, there's nothing to it. Plenty of different types of races going on all weekend long. Sunday going to be no different than that. But coming up later on in the show, we're going to break down exactly what happened in duel number one this weekend with Lauren Kanan and her husband, Tony. He's a driver on the IndyCar circuit. He's going to be telling us about his new ink 
in honor of his newborn. That's coming up next from Suburban Ford, 7 Sports Day. Welcome back to the Suburban Ford 7 Sportscape right here from Belle Isle for the Chevrolet Detroit Belle Isle Grand Prix. The duel number two coming up in just a couple of hours. The polls are going to be set and a lot of drivers out here, well, they started their careers on some of these little mini things as you see going in and out behind me. Go-karting, yeah, Ari Lion Dyke Jr. was in town earlier this week at Cart to Cart in Sterling Heights. And while Ari knows a little bit about go-kart racing, he doesn't do Indy anymore. He does the stadium super truck circuit now, jumping off of ramps and doing all sorts of things, but his roots right here on the go-kart track. And I might have gotten a little premature in my Twitter trash talk, but Ari still got it. I keep saying it year after year, but one of these days, Ari, I'm definitely going to beat you. No, no, I'm not. Something else I'm probably not gonna be doing anytime soon is getting a tattoo. I'm ink free, as the millennials would say, probably laughing at me for not having one, but Tony Kanan, he does have some new ink, and he told our Brad Galley the reasons behind it in a very exclusive interview. During the off season, um, I probably, I was bored, and I love tattoos, and uh, I actually found this Whoa. tattoo artist. Uh, I am a big fan of his. He was in Brazil for a tour, so I decided to make a tattoo about my biggest achievements in life. So we started obviously with the Borg Warner. Oh yeah. Which I received it here in Detroit a few years ago. From winning the Indy 500. From winning the Indy 500. Then I have Leo's hand, which is my first son, and Deco's feet. Oh. This is my wedding date. Come on. I yeah, didn't even see in Romania, yeah, with Lauren, and then I have the kid's birthday. All in Roman numerals there. Yeah. Your bicep looks just like mine, except it's way bigger. It's just a camera, but it's don't worry about it. I mean, it's how long just... did it take you to plan this out? So it took 12 hours, two sessions of six hours. I love it. I think uh, you know, it took me a long time to achieve some of my lifelong dreams, and obviously uh, they all fitted it in my arm. I want to be cool like Tony. Okay. I know you're not the best tattoo artist <laughs> in the world. Will you give me something just to fit in? Uh, man, let me think about. Okay, yeah. All right, let's try. Man, look at his his biceps. Get out of here. Mine, so. <laughs> we'll just do a. It's just me at the racetrack. <laughs> the big nose, really, really ugly. My wife is gonna look at here me and go. say, "What <laughs> the heck?" Oh, look at that! That is handsomeness on my arm. Can't beat that. I'm flexing really yeah. hard. Gotta apologize to your wife. Sorry. <laughs> it comes out. Good seeing you, buddy. Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, Brad, I think you're with me on this one. Probably not going to be getting any ink anytime soon. Doesn't suit you. Just my personal take on that whole thing. All right, headed to a Pistons game with Tony Kanan earlier this year as the Grand Prix was doing some of its promoting there. Tony Kanan also in the house, and me and him had a little bit of fun on the court trying to show some tricks and some skills. He should stick to racing as I should stick to broadcasting. But at the same time, when in Detroit at a Pistons game, you have to try to live one of the very big traditions, imitating Mason. And Tony, well, he did a pretty good job. Detroit basketball. Tony, we love you, man. But you're not on the show as much as your wife is. Lauren Kanan has gracefully helped us for the third year in a row on our pre and post race coverage. She's going to be doing it again this afternoon for Duel 2, and she helped break down all of what went down on Duel 1 Saturday, coming up in the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Game. You know, great performance by the team, really good strategy. We, we kind of had the plan laid out, and then when everybody came in the pits on lap two or three or whatever it was uh, to get rid of, rid of the red tires, I thought, man, that's never going to work. We're back to where we were and actually lost some position. So uh, I'm not quite sure. I'm going to need to watch the replay to see exactly how that unfolded, but couldn't be any happier for the Hydroxycut crew and, and, you know, for Chevy here in the backyard. You know, it's, it's a big deal for us. Yeah, honestly, you seem as surprised as anyone how this one unfolded. But when you made that last pit stop and was able to come out in front of the field, did you do you know then that you had it wrapped up? Yeah, I mean, we we still had, uh, we still had to beat Connor. Obviously, he was uh, you know on the mission as well, and uh, he pushed it even further. And uh, I got you know a little bit of traffic and a little bit of that, and I, it was going to be pretty close. And uh, you know, it's just, it was just you know. 
back against the wall and just as hard as I could and, and it worked out. Your dual one winner, Sebastian Bourdais, Lauren Canan joining us now in the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cave. Welcome back. Thank you We've so much missed for having you. me on. I missed you guys. I know. Well, <laughs> look, dual two, I think this is one of the most interesting things about this race in particular. Two in a row, guys got to re-gear up today and we're going to have some potentially some challenging things this afternoon with the weather being spotty. No, absolutely. The weather makes so much difference here. Of course, these Indy cars can run when inclement weather comes out. They have alternate tire choices for that. They have rain treaded tires, and of course, they have the racing slicks that they use when the when the track is dry. But again, depending on just how wet that becomes, they may choose to go to them. Someone can choose to go to them a little earlier than others. This re this creates so much strategy play for these teams. Just like we saw this KVSH team figure that right. out early. How do you make that determination? How have you seen teams be successful with that? Well, like I said, so many times, if the rain comes out during the green flag racing, it's all about getting it right. You see, just because we're feeling a drizzle doesn't mean the track surface is going to wet down that much. So many times, it's like a driver's call to say, ah, I think it's getting a little slick out here. We need to come in. Maybe they think it's not, and they think it's doable. We've seen it go wrong and right in so many cases, and it can just be like a lap-by-lap -lap play. One lap, it's good. If it downpours the next, you could be hung out. Obviously, listening to her talk about this is very, very knowledgeable. You can do a lot more of that today. Two o'clock, our hour and a half special called Pit Pass, leading you up to the race at 3.30, duel number two. And then we'll be here for the Winter Circle show immediately following the race. Thanks so much for Lauren joining me. All my guests on the Suburban Report 7 Sports Cape this week on location at the Chevrolet Detroit Duel in the D. We'll see you next week.